Hello everyone, I'm Yu Dai. This is a joint work with Fang Guozhang and Chang An Zhao. My talk is about pairing friendly clothes with old prime embedding degrees. I first give a brief introduction of pairings and inhibit clothes. The cryptographic pairing is a banana and non-degenerate map of the form G1 times G2 to GT, and the two important groups are subgroups of an inhibited curve. The output group is a subgroup of a finite field FP2K, and here the integer, the integer K is the embedding degree of this curve. In practice, we, we wish pairing computation is efficient and secure, and we, we call such, such type of curves as pairing-friendly curves. If a curve, if a curve E is pairing-friendly, for security, the, the, the order of E over FP should have a large prime confactor. And, and, and moreover, since pairing computation involves the arithmetic in the, in the, in the four extension field FP to K, we also wish the embedding degree K is small. However, for a random inhibited curve, its embedding degree is usually large. For this reason, we have to we, ha we have to generate a, generate pairing friendly curves on purpose. In this in this table, we list the three popular pairing friendly curves, and the first the first two curves have embedding degree twelve, and the, the third one has embedding degree twenty four. And we and we can say that these curves can be parameterized by polynomials. The security of pairing-based protocols relies on the hardness of the DLP in the three pairing groups. In the case of G1 and G2, the best known attack algorithm is the product root algorithm. In the case of GT, the best known, the, the best known attack algorithm is NFS and its variants such as TNFS, sec, EXTNFS, and SEXTNFS. And the and the, the, among these variants, sixteen FS is the most powerful attack attack algorithm to pairing friendly curves. In fact, this attack, this 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 attack on pairing this attack works well on pairing friendly curves, satisfying the following two conditions. The first one is that the embedding degree K is composite, and the the second one is that the characteristic p can be represented uh, as a tiny coefficient polynomial of moderate degree. And in conclusion, this tag is almost the tenor to popular pairing friendly curves such as the BN and the BLS families. For example, the previous BN curve at the 128 bit security level now is only around 100 bit secure. And in order to resist this attack, a, a direct way is to update the, the k sets of popular pairing friendly curves. And uh, besides that, we also can, can construct a new curves such as that is in is characteristic p. It's not a special. And in fact, we also can see in and in fact since pairing friendly curves with old prime embedding degrees is immune to the, this tag. We also can, can we also can choose such type of curves. And here we recommend a fam family of curve which is named as BW13. This family has embedding degree 13 and can be parameterized by polynomials. In this table we 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 list the pra parameters of of the three popular pairing friendly curves and the and our target curves at the opposite at the opposite 128 bit security level, and this this parameter is is recommended by the Gilwick in PKC 2020. And and here we summarized the strengths and the weaknesses of the of BW13 curve. Uh, and uh, 
on the on the positive side due to due to the small size of the prime fed FP to the prime fed FP, it provides faster operations in G1. And 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 addition, due to the small size of the full extension field, it also prefer, pro, pro, it also pro, provides faster arithmetic in the in, in the full extension field. And last, due to the large value of phi k, the number of iterations for mid loop and group exploitations in G two and GT is also small. And on the negative side, since the since the group G two is defined over the full extension field, and the operations in G two is slow. And in addition, due to the old prime Ibani degree, the, the trick of the denom denominator elimination is not applicable anymore. And finally, and this curve, the, the, there is no faster squaring in the cyclotomical subgroup. In this work, we, fo we first propose a new formula for computing the optimal pairing on this curve, and then we focus on optimizing group exponentiations in G2 and GT on this curve. And finally, we provide a faster software implementation for pairing combination and the, and the corresponding building blocks over this curve on 64-bit processor. We now move on pairing computation. As far as I understand, the optimal pairing is the is the best choice for many pairing blended curves. And here we give the formula of the optimal pairing and the BW13 family. In in detail, we use FMQ to denote a rational function whose divisor is given in this way. And we cause and we also call this this function as mean function. We use L to de to denote the a straight a straightened line function, and then due to denote the vertical the vertical line function. And from this formula, we can see that pairing computation and the BW BW thirteen family largely comes from the two line two mean function evaluation and the final exponentiation. This is the algorithm of mean function evaluate evaluation. And uh, the, the doubling step, we need to compute a point doubling and, uh, and, and uh, a squaring times a ration of two nine function in evaluations. And likewise, at the addition step, we need to compute a point addition and uh, and the value f uh, times a, a ratio of two nine function evaluations. And actually, and the BW thirty family, uh, the is the the mean the length of mean loop is uh, is about top is about twice the size of the the set z. And we now give the new formula of the optimal pairing. And the BW13 family, and uh, firstly, we need to know that there exist two two efficiently computable anamorphisms on this curve. The first one is the Frobenius map, and the second one is the GLV map. And by combining these two maps together, we can we can get the new map Poisson. And then we find that. The action of Poisson on the group G2 corresponding to the scanner, the negative Z. Now, we, we go back to the formula of the optimum pairing and, 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 and the, for the, and for the second, for the second mean function, we can replace the, the negative Z by the map Poisson. Then, we can deduce this equation and here, the 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 fat he means the dual of phi. Uh, so in the in, in this formula, 
we can replace the, the second mean function by this new function and uh, and replace the negative z in the in the nine function by the map psi. Then we can get this new new formula. And in this new formula, the cost of mean loop largely comes from the two mean function evaluations and uh, it would be more efficient to to obtain these two values at the same mean loop. The firstly, the the two mean function evaluations will share point operations, and secondly, since the point since the since since the while while coordinate of the point p and the fat and the fat head p are, are same, the the two nine function evaluations will share a number a number of intermediate values. In this table, we list the operation counts for pairing computation and the BW13 curve uh, between our work and the previous works. And we can see that our work reduced the the cost of uh, of the mean loop. And here we skip our work on the final exponentiation as the performance improvement uh, is slight. Now we say exponentiation in G2. Given random point Q in G2 and the random integer n, a question here is how to compute the point n times Q efficiently. As far as I know, the best known method is the GIS method and this method is to decompose the random scalar n as, as fucking mini scalars and these mini scalars satisfy this equation then by the fact that pi q is equal to p times q we can compute the point n times q by using the right side of this equation and clearly the, the efficiency of this method relates on the that's on the size of these mini scalars. In fact, uh, by using the Bobby Merritt writing technique, we have the size of, of these mini scalars is about the size of R over 5k. And when applying this method to the BW13310 curve, the number of iterations is equal to 24. Now we give the new method of scatter decomposition. Firstly, we use END sub FP2K to, de to denote the anamorphism ring of the curve E over FP2K. Then in the BW13 family, the order of the Frobenius map and the GLV map is in this ring is equal to K and 3 respectively. And since the GCD of 3 and K is equal to 1, then the order of the new map psi is in this ring is equal to 3 times K. And since the phi 3 times K is, is equal to double phi K, and similar to the GRS method, the scatter n now can be decomposed as double phi K mean scalars, and the, the size of these mean scalars is uh, is about the size of r over phi k over double phi k. In fact, uh, the the new the new scatter decomposition in the BW13 family is quite simple, and more precisely, since since psi q is equal to negative z times q, we only need to write the scatter n in the basis of the absolute value of of z. And when applying this new method to the BW13310 curve, the, the number of iterations can be reduced to 12. Now we move on exponentiation in GT. For this operation, the best, the best known method is still the GRS method. And due to the old prime embedding degree in the BW13 family, the group inversion in GT is costly, and in order to avoid this operation, we want to obtain a all positive decomposition. Now we show how to get it. First, and at the first step, at the first step, 
Using the GRS method, you can decompose the expo exponent as a vector n. Then, we define a lattice L pi that is gain, uh, given in this way. And for any for any vector c in this lattice L pi, we can see the the new vector n plus c is also valid, and we use n prime to denote this new this new vector, and so it might it might be feasible to to select a vector c such that the terms of n prime are all positive, and fortunately we find a or find a perfect choice in the in the BW thirteen family, and in fact, uh, by using the Magma software, we can find out the triple L reduce reduce the basis of L psi, and here and here we list this basis, and uh, and when we select the vector C as B zero plus B one plus C dos plus plus B nine minus minus B ten. Minus B eleven. Then it's easy to to prove that the term, the terms of n prime are all positive. More importantly, the size of the new vector n prime is only one is only one bit larger than the than the original vector m. We now see the implementation results. Firstly. We use the radical library to implement a prime field arithmetic, and then we combine CRISPR algorithm and the near reduction technique to to implement full extension field arithmetic. And the implement and the implementation results on the BLS12, BN, and the BLS24 curves also come from radical library. And from this table, we can see that for the operations in G1, the 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 curve B W thirteen is fast. And for ex for example, for the exponentiation in G1, then B W thirteen is much faster than than B L S twelve and B N. And and moreover, the B W thirteen is over the is also the winner for the operations in G T. And including exponentiation in GT and the membership testing in GT. On the negative side, this this curve pays a penalty for the operations in G2. And for example, for hashing to G2, BW13 is over 10 times slower than BN. And for single pairing computation, BW13 is much faster than, than BRS. 24, and is very close to BN. And for for pairing products, B, BW13 is even faster than BN. And our code is available at this link. And this is my talk. Thank you. Okay, so the speaker is has an auditor uh, appeared online. So we will continue to the next talk, uh, which is by uh, Patrick Longa. So the title is Efficient Algorithms for Large Prime Characteristic Fields and Their Application to Bilinear Pairings, uh, again by Patrick Longa. So uh, please go ahead. All right, uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, let's jump to the presentation. So, um, well, what we are concerned about is this operation that you see in the screen. Uh, basically, we have two sets of uh, values, AI and BI. Uh, these sets are of size T. Each value in the set uh, is defined over a large prime field FB. Now, the operation that we care about is this summation of products uh, between the sets, and uh, the final result uh, reduce uh, our large prime uh, field P. Uh, now, uh, one of the... Uh, the, one of the interesting aspects of this fundamental operation is that it can be find, found at the core of many uh, cryptologic applications covering uh, constructive and destructive purposes. Let's now discuss, uh, discuss how to uh, compute this operation. Uh, in a naive way, we can simply perform all the uh, multiplications 
uh, then we uh, perform a, a reduction for each of the of the uh, products. And after a series of additions and a simple correction, uh, at the end, we obtain the final result. So the cost of this is going to be T integer multiplications and T modular reductions. Um, and if we assume that uh, P um, can be represented with N limbs and using the uh, Montgomery arithmetic, then uh, we have a cost as you see in the screen with the expression uh, there in red. And this is in terms of the size uh, multiplies. But there is a more efficient way. Uh, there is a widespread uh, technique that is used almost everywhere. And this is the so-called lazy reduction technique where you perform the, comp the whole computation and then move the modular reduction at the at the very end to the very end of the of the operation so graphically you can see it like this you again perform all the products uh but then you don't perform the uh, reductions immediately you add the intermediate results and at the very end uh you perform the reductions so this way you can reduce the cost to t integer multiplications and one single modular reduction uh, the trade-off, of course, is that, as you can see, you require these double precision additions. And also, there is an increase in the memory requirement, right? Because uh, now you, you require to uh, store this uh, a larger in, in intermediate value. Uh, if we assume, again, the use of Montgomery arithmetic, you see a nice reduction in the cost uh, uh, from the previous slide to this uh, new cost that you see uh, in, uh, highlighted in red. Now, in fact, lazy reduction has been the traditional widely used technique uh, uh, for this kind of uh, operation, this summation of products. I can uh, mention uh, software implementations out there uh, for pairings, for elliptic curve, for discrete log-based schemes, for both constructive and cryptanal cryptanalytic uh, purposes. In many cases, this is done in combination with subquadratic multiplication algorithms, most notably uh, Karatsuba. Now, in some software hardware implementations, it's also, it's also used with the caveat that in this case, some compact implementations uh, might avoid the technique uh, because of some memory constraints. As I mentioned, this uh, lazy reduction technique requires extra uh, memory. Uh, and also, sometimes hardware can avoid even the use of Karatsuba because it might increase the complexity of the circuitry. Now, what is the representative uh, operation uh, for this summation of products that we can find out there? Is basically the multiplication over a quadratic extension field FPS square. I show a simple example, uh, a, the simplest example that you can find out there, where is when you have the prime P uh, congruent to three modulo four. In this case, you can use the reducible polynomial I squared plus one. So you can, can construct uh, FPS square as you can see in the screen. And in this case, you perform a multiplication as, as you see there. Uh, C0 and C1 are computed actually using this summation of products that I mentioned. Uh, this, is, this is done in a school, uh, school, book, uh, school book way uh, there. And the cost is four integer multiplications and two modular reductions, assuming again the use of lazy reduction. You can apply the use of Karatsuba there in combination with lazy reduction. So in this case, uh, you reduce the cost to only three mod uh, integer multiplications and two modular reductions. And this is the widely used approach that you can find in software, I could, I could say at least around, uh, since 2010. And uh, this, is, this has been the state of the art, basically implementing separated integer multiplication uh, and modular reduction. Uh, in the case of modular reduction, of course, typically using Montgomery arithmetic. So in this work, basically, we propose a new, more efficient way to do this summation of products. Uh, what we basically do is to generalize the popular interleaf modular multiplication. And uh, let me describe it uh, uh, very simply with uh, in the Montgomery world, right? That is the most uh, common approach out there. But the technique can be uh, extended uh, to other settings uh, that, do, that, that don't use Montgomery. So. Again, we have our pair of sets, AI and BI. We, uh, our summation of uh, products has to respect certain bound. This is the Montgomery bound, P times R, where R is a power of two, uh, specifically two to the N times W, where N is the digit size of the prime and W is the computer world size. 
We also have P prime, which is the Montgomery constant. In this case, uh, corresponding to the radix R, uh, because uh, here in this, in this, for this technique, we are con uh, uh, concerned about the, uh, the radix R Montgomery technique. So if we follow this approach, then basically this is what we have to do to insert our summation of products in the technique. We initialize C to, to zero, and then we perform this series, uh, this series of uh, computation uh, for a number of times where the, uh, the number of iterations is given at the bottom. And uh, you can see the insertion of the summation of products right there, highlighted in red. Um, they, uh, it's written in such a way that it shows a computation that do, does a digit by row uh, style. But in fact, can be this can be written so that it, uh, it, it can be adapted to the many ways in which uh, interleaf modular multiplication exists in the literature. And in fact, I, I'll show two of those ways. Uh, one that is uh, suitable for software is called the coarsely integrated form. Uh, you can see in the screen the uh, basically the same expression that I had before with the insertion of the uh, summation of products there, but uh, now written with a for loop, right? So again, we are uh, using a, a digit by row computation style. We also have in the last line the uh, another significant operation that is the multiplication with the prime and the uh, correction with the radix R. But if you notice carefully, these operations are really MULAT operations. You can do a, uh, this computation, performing a multiplication, and then the accumulation part. And the other significant operation, the same. It's a multiplication addition, so it's a MULAT. And this really uh, 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 supports a very streamlined uh, implementation of the technique that uh, for suitable sizes of the prime actually uh, minimizes the, the friction with memory. And this is actually what uh, boosts performance uh, in this technique. And I'll show a more specific example with, uh, uh, with some code here. Um, this is for uh, uh, the popular pairing curve VLS12381 uh, for the implementation of the FP square multiplication. So T is equal to two. Uh, that means that we are uh, adding two products. So that's why you see two macro functions there that are MULAT 64 times 384. That's uh, because we are multiplying a digit by row. And uh, two of them correspond to the summation of products. Uh, there is a, a, a digit multiplication with a MULEX instruction uh, for the simple uh, multiplication to the RIF Q. And then again, another significant operation MULAT macro for the last uh, part of the computation. So three macros, uh, and uh, they can be easily written in assembly. Hopefully it's clear in the screen. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll just say that uh, because we have a prime in this case that is uh, contains six limbs, then basically the MULAT is going to be six MULEX instructions, multiplication instructions, with the corresponding additions. So very simple, very compact. And uh, the most important aspect that I don't, I, I'm not sure is visible here, but it is that all the intermediate computations can be carried out over re registers. So no need to perform memory accesses here. And that's what boosts performance uh, for, uh, a lot. All right, now the case for hardware, there, there is this case that is suitable for hardware is the finally integrated form. In this case, we express the same uh, computation, but in a digit by digit way. So you can see inserted there our multiplication uh, expression for uh, or the summation of, of products. And the most important computation is the, the for loop at the very end. And this can be expressed in hardware very easily. Uh, again, let's consider the case of FP square multiplication. So we have T equal to two, so two products in the summation. That means that we need two multipliers and then for the final multiplier with P, we need an extra multiplier. So three multipliers in total, and then the accumulator uh, right there, right? And this accumulator is for the accumulation of that previous iteration, because in this pipeline architecture, we, we wanna do one cycle per iteration. And if we do it in a pipeline way, then basically this is what you will obtain, right? Uh, one cycle at a time, uh, in, in, and basically, uh, the important thing here is that this would be optimal for an FP square multiplication. If you have two instances of this circuit, 
uh, basically six multipliers and two accumulators. This, this is the best you can get for this kind of one cycle per iteration architecture. All right, so we have discussed about these two cases uh, where we can uh, adapt the method very uh, nicely. Uh, let's talk about performance and two important applications where we show the, the, the significant improvement that we get with, the, with this new approach. So for performance, what we do is, is we run an instruction count uh, for the representative uh, operations uh, that in our case is the multiplication over FPS square. This is done on an X64 CPU. On the x axis, we have uh, the number, uh, a number of limbs for a certain prime p. So this is n. And uh, for the counting of instructions, we count multiplications, additions, also memory accesses, reads and writes. And uh, the first part is a theoretical count of instructions uh, of the state of the art lazy reduction plus Karatsuba technique. This is the red bars. Then we also have the uh, blue bars for the new method. Apparently the laser reduction technique with Karatsuba is much more efficient, but uh, uh, let's now consider the practical case, actual implementations. In the actual implementations, what happens is that memory, me memory, many memory accesses are eliminated because we have a bunch of, uh, of registers that we can use. As I, as I, as I explained before, the method is, 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 is perfect to eliminate these memory accesses having a, a streamlined implementation. So now you see the new results for practical implementations. Uh, the red bars uh, with the stripes are the practical lazy reduction implementation, uh, reduces the cost a little bit, but the much more reduction is in the, in the new method uh, that is shown in blue uh, bars with the dots. Hopefully, we expect that this kind of analysis translates to applications. So, so to analyze what happens with actual applications, we um, study two important applications applications out there. The first one is bilinear parents. In this case, what we care about is the implementation over extension fields, an extension field FP to the K, and this is critical for performance. And the standard approach is to use a towering scheme. And in this case, let me show you an example of a tower. Uh, in this case, go for from FP square up to FP to the 12, and each layer is constructed on top of a previous layer. Now, with the method, what we can do is actually avoid the towering technique. Uh, I'll show the case of FP to the six, uh, where we can multiply, writing everything down to uh, the ground field uh, FP. And if we do so, then we can perform the, the multiplication in this way. Uh, the, the operations in parentheses are actually simple additions and subtractions that can be done offline. Uh, but then if you notice, everything is summation of products. So basically, we can apply, uh, apply the approach directly, right? Um, as I'll explain later, we can do this uh, several times in many extension fields. But when we increase the, the degree of the extension field, it's better to start combining the towering scheme with the approach. And I will highlight that in the next slide where we compare uh, implementation numbers. This is for an X64 CPU using the popular curve VLS12381 uh, that, for example, this is used in Zcash. We compare uh, the, re uh, the results of FPS square multiplication obtained with uh, the Relic library. There is a cryptographic li library containing many state-of-the-art implementations of parents. And this library uses precisely separated multiplication and reduction, combining Karatsuba with lazy reduction. And we compare with our interleaf approach over FP square. And you can see the nice reduction in clock cycle counts. But the, more pro the most pronounced uh, improvement is actually on memory consumption. In the stack memory consumption, you see a significant drop in the number of bytes. Uh, that's nice. Uh, for FP uh, to the six, we actually show two cases. One is combining the tower with our method. And the other one is uh, writing everything uh, uh, over the ground field using directly our, our method over FP to the six. Uh, the, this last approach is actually the one that achieved the best performance. Uh, you see the numbers in bold. But if we go to FP to, FP to the 12, the combined approach of the tower with the, with the technique actually give us a, a, a better cycle count, the slightly better uh, numbers there. But the new method completely written over FP12 uh, still obtains the best performance in terms of memory consumption. Finally, guys, I'll show the numbers for the full pairing implementation. 
uh, we achieved significant reductions for the for the whole computation. Uh, we show, uh, in this case, the number for 128-bit security level. In the paper, we also show uh, new speed record for 192-bit security level, improving the numbers that uh, are obtained in, in Relic, for example. And, um, and, and now you know why uh, this presentation uh, it has been moved all the way to the end of this of this uh, conference. All right, so the second application that I want to cover is super singular Sony basis games. Uh, the original title that I had in mind for this paper was actually efficient algorithms for large prime characteristic fields and their application to bilinear pairings and super singular Sony base protocols. But what happened is that last year, uh, in uh, July 2022, actually a series of papers uh, starting uh, with a paper by Castric and Decru show that uh, SIDH and SI can be broken in polynomial time. That was devastating. That actually forced to rewrite the whole paper, uh, take out all the parts corresponding to isoines. Um, Yeah, not good news, of course. Uh, so probably that was, uh, that was bad. The uh, the good news is actually that uh, super singular scenes are making a comeback, and this is thanks to Ski Sign. Ski Sign is a new signature scheme based on isogenies. The main idea is as follows: uh, take a curve E A as the public key, the corresponding endomorphism ring of that curve as the private key, and then the signer needs to prove knowledge of the endomorphism ring uh, by solving the isogeny problem. What is very interesting about a ski sign is that it offers the smallest combination of public key as signature sizes out there in the post-quantum world. And you can see a comparison, for example, in the table where ski sign is, uh, has significantly smaller sizes compared with the lithium, for example. So a significant uh, a reduction there. Uh, so that's very nice. Uh, the challenge, the, the hard part is that uh, the uh, signature scheme is uh, relatively very slow. And uh, so the challenge that we have is, and it's an ongoing effort, is to try to push performance and try to make it as fast as possible. Uh, we are trying to our best right now to, to do that, uh, to make that possible. But uh, the good news for us, uh, happily, is that uh, uh, the underlying arithmetic is constructed over a favorite uh, 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 setting, which is uh, multiplication over FP square. So we can apply the method, and uh, that's actually what we did. And we uh, achieved a significant speed up in the signature plus verification time. It was around 1.7 times the speed up. Uh, this is for NIST level one uh, using 254-bit uh, prime. Uh, even better performance improvements uh, were achieved for verification times, where the practical uh, clock cycle count that we uh, uh, obtained was uh, the reduction from 60 million cycles to uh, 22 million cycles. So a very nice reduction. It's uh, almost threefold. So a significant reduction there, still relatively expensive, but uh, a very nice boost in performance uh, nonetheless. All right, so I'll finish this presentation mentioning that Ski Sign is in round two of the this new uh, new NIST call for additional signature schemes. So anybody interested, uh, please check out the official website, skisign.org. And with that, I'll finish this presentation and uh, now I'm open to questions. Thank you. Well, thank you for this wonderful presentation. Um, are there questions? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you for the presentation, Patrick. A uh, quick question is, do you have an intuition for why applying the method to FP12 actually was slower than uh, just stopping at FP6? Yeah, probably uh, I didn't, yeah, gave the details on the, on the instruction counts, but um, uh, one of the things with the method is when you start increasing the, the number of limbs in the, in the prime, then there is a, an impact in performance. And uh, the, the reason is because uh, the method is based on this idea of avoiding memory accesses, right? Reducing as much as possible memory accesses. So you, you should have enough registers to uh, store the intermediate value. So if you start increasing P, then that's a problem. That's related to the fact that the same. If you start uh, increasing P, then Karatsuba starts to become uh, more attractive. So that's the effect that you see when you increase P, 
but also similar when you increase the degree of the extension field, then Karatsuba starts to, you know, be the better technique again. So in, in the intermediate part of uh, degrees, I would say a combination of both is, is going to give you the, the best performance. That's what I observe in the in the experiments. Thank you. Okay, there's ample time for further questions. I don't see any questions on Zoom yet. No. Okay, so I do have a question. So yeah. you mentioned uh, pairings as an application and pairings are of course used for snarks. Yeah. So if you would apply uh, your methods to snarks, would you get even further speed ups or do you just get the speed ups from the pairings, you think? Uh, I haven't studied the, the the if what happened if we start putting uh, applying the, the technique to to the other parts of the of the computation. Uh, it, yeah, they, at this point, I'm confident that of the boost that you can you can obtain with parents. But yeah, it would be a good extension a follow up work. Actually, we mentioned a bunch of ideas in the paper how to follow up on this because I can only explore a, a, a little bit on parents and on isolines, but then expanding to other areas that that be a good a nice direction and, and see in this in this case with you know with snarks that'd be that'd be nice interesting uh, yeah. you should get faster g2 arithmetic anyways right because it's fp right square. that's true yeah good point that is straightforward that that would be a, a straightforward application is it possible to use this for uh exponentiation in rsa as well then since it's that's also uh, interesting. Well, in RSA, as long as I see, you don't have a summation of products, right? Uh, it, it, where you can you can really uh, apply the the technique in that in that way. Um, so the answer is maybe not. Uh, I have thought of that, and uh, I haven't found applications that are related to RSA where 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 you can when you where you can do it. Um, yeah. Okay, any further? Oh, yes, behind the... Uh, do you know if it is possible to apply it in FHG? Um, I haven't explored that that neither. So so that might be another another point of, uh, of yeah, of uh, studying and, and, and seeing if it, if, if it can be applied. No? Okay, thank you. Any final questions? Yeah. So the, the key is to try to find this summation of products in, in several applications. I have done a little bit of a, a researching on that direction. I have found even cryptanalytic applications where you where you do need do need this. The two most interesting ones were were parents and and uh, but I'm sure I'm, I'm missing some. Yeah, so I think this is a very uh, promising research direction. It's a good uh, end to the academic part of the program. So let's thank Patrick again. Thank you. Uh, the closing remarks for this conference will take uh, place in uh, the other auditorium uh, in about uh, five minutes' time. So there will be time for us to move there. Uh, if you stay here, it will also be streamed. But I suggest it be more fun to crash the party upstairs. <laughs>